Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're gonna be providing some background information on the vertical stress caused by a quote, infinite line load acting on the ground surface. So we're gonna consider a uniformly distributed line load, which if you remember from your knowledge from statics has units of force over length. So that could be units of, for example, pounds per foot, which is a PLF or maybe kilonewtons per meter. And it's going to be of infinite length, which all we mean by infinite is it's very long. And it's going to have an intensity of Q. And again, it's acting on the ground surface. So I want to make sure we, we hit on this idea of infinite length. In reality, no line load is truly infinite in length. When we say infinite length, we mean a line load that is just very long. So for example, if we are analyzing or designing a strip footing or a strip foundation that's supporting a wall, then we could model that as a line load of quote unquote infinite length as long as it's quite long compared to the width that the load may be distributed over, okay? So um, just like in our previous video when we discussed Boussinesq's stress dissipation methodology for a point load, Boussinesq also, and, and as well as Westergaard, have also developed some uh, theories of elasticity that account for line loads that are uniformly distributed. So uh, let's go ahead and draw a figure first so we can help visualize what this looks like. So I'm going to try to draw a 3D figure. And this plane right here that I'm drawing represents the ground surface, okay? This just represents the ground surface going in all directions, all right? Now, when um, I'm talking about a line load, I'm talking about, let's say we have a line in the plane of the ground surface, and it's supporting a uniformly distributed load that looks kind of like this. Okay, so this is again supposed to be kind of a three-dimensional representation of a line load that can just keep going on and on forever in both directions. So it can keep going in, in uh, this direction here. And remember, this is acting on the ground surface, okay? So let's consider a point A, and I'm going to put this point A somewhere over here, point A. And I'm going to say that this point A has some distance of Z below the ground surface, and it has some horizontal distance of X away from where the uh, away from where the line load is being applied on the ground surface. So the horizontal distance again is x and z is the vertical distance. So if I were to look at a 2D representation of this figure, then I'm going to sketch it kind of small over here, but let's say that here's the ground surface and let's say that your line load is right here and again it has intensity of q now, in this 2D figure, our line load Q is coming in and out of the screen at you, okay? So this is um, kind of like if we put an eyeball over here and we're looking at the line load from this direction. So Q in this 2D representation is coming in and out of the screen at you and point A is over here and so this horizontal distance x is here and the vertical distance is z and that's below the ground surface okay so how do we calculate the stress uh, at at that point a of interest so we're going to say that the stress at some depth z is going to be equal to 2 times q times z cubed all divided by pi times the quantity x squared plus z squared, and then we're going to square that quantity, okay? So this is how we calculate the stress at uh, this point A beneath the ground surface that is due to an applied line load that's very long Q at the ground surface. Now, um, 
there's a lot of great textbooks out there that go over uh, this theory. One of them that I'm personally a big fan of is uh, Das and Siva Kugan, which is uh, in its fifth edition right now. They express uh, this equation in a non-dimensional form, um, which is expressed like this. Sigma sub Z divided by Q over Z equals, and they have the two still here in the numerator, but they've uh, factored some things out of the denominator, leaving this equation. And um, what they then do is they use what they call this non-dimensional form of the previous equation with an accompanying table that they provide in their textbook. So I'm gonna say uh, this equation dot, 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 to be used with table. And in their textbook, it is table 8.2. And then I'm going to say, you know, this is reference DOS and Siva Coogan, fifth edition. Okay. And so what's helpful about this particular table is you can enter in to their table 8.2 um, with um, an X over Z. Uh, ratio and then a sigma divided by Q over Z value and you can pull out um, an influence value for the function and um, easily be able to calculate uh, sigma Z without having to punch through uh, all of this version of the equation. But if you punch it through correctly and you do all your algebra correctly, you should get the exact same thing because all this non-dimensional form is is just a repackaging of this above equation, okay? Um, so you could use either one. So that concludes this background video on vertical stress caused by an infinite line load. In the next video, I'm gonna do a quick example illustrating uh, a numerical example of this concept. So if you found this helpful, please hit like and subscribe.